If you've ever dug into your soil and found it quiet, still, and lifeless, no wriggling movement, no glistening trails, no signs of the underground workforce you desperately want, you know that sinking feeling. Without earthworms, your garden is missing the silent engineers that till, fertilize, and aerate every square inch. But here's the surprise. You can call them back, not with expensive worm orders or fancy composts, but with something so simple it's hiding in your pantry. Imagine pouring a living fermenting mass of sprouted seeds onto the soil and watching worms appear in droves within days. This isn't magic, it's biology, and once you see how it works, you'll realize you've been sitting on one of nature's fastest worm-summoning secrets all along. Stay with me, because by the end of this, you'll know exactly how to set this trap in motion and turn even tired ground into a worm magnet. Earthworms aren't just drawn to food, they're drawn to an environment that smells alive. A pile of fresh seed sprouts is the perfect invitation because it's pulsing with enzymes, amino acids, and sugars that leak into the soil as they break down. When you soak and sprout certain seeds, you unlock a chain reaction that not only feeds worms but also transforms the soil around them. The process starts above ground but ends deep below the surface, creating a fertile tunnel system as worms respond to the scent and nutrition. And the best part, this method works in almost any garden, from sandy beds to clay plots, with results you can see in less than a week. The seeds you choose matter more than you think. Legumes like lentils, mung beans, peas, and chickpeas are especially potent because they contain high levels of proteins and starches that release quickly during germination. Grains like barley, wheat, rye, and sorghum work just as well delivering a steady carbohydrate breakdown that worms find irresistible. When these seeds are sprouted, their internal chemistry shifts, starch turns to sugar, proteins break down into amino acids and stored fats release energy in a more digestible form. To a worm, this is the scent of opportunity. To your soil, it's the beginning of a feast. The preparation is almost effortless. Start with a cup or two of your chosen seed untreated, unroasted, and preferably organic to avoid chemical residue. Place them in a jar or bucket and cover with water at least twice the depth of the seeds. Let them soak for 8 to 12 hours, then drain and rinse. At this point, you can leave them in the container, rinsing twice a day until you see tiny roots and shoots emerge. Depending on the seed type and temperature, this may take 1 to 3 days. You're not aiming for full plants, just enough sprouting to trigger the biochemical changes worms crave. Once sprouted, they're ready to use immediately for the freshest scent and nutrient profile. So, application is simple, but, you know, where and how you place the seeds really determines their impact. Worms, they travel by sensing moisture, temperature, and scent, so you'll want to create a small pit or maybe a shallow trench in the area you want to improve. Just drop in your sprouted seeds and cover them lightly with damp compost or soil. The covering, it's essential. It keeps the seeds moist, protects them from birds, and traps the scent so it diffuses slowly into the surrounding ground. Within days, worms will tunnel toward the source drawn by both the scent and the microbial bloom that forms as the sprouts decompose. In compacted or poor soils, you'll often see their telltale castings at the surface within a week. This method, well, it does more than just lure worms. It kickstarts a whole micro-ecosystem. As the sprouts break down, they feed bacteria and fungi which in turn become food for protozoa and other soil dwellers. Worms feeding on this microbial buffet will leave behind castings enriched with nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and trace minerals in plant-ready form. The act of tunneling breaks up compaction, improves drainage, and allows oxygen to penetrate deeper into the root zone. It's a cascading effect. The soaked seeds are the bait the worms are the workers, and the soil life they stimulate becomes the engine of long-term fertility. One of the overlooked benefits of sprouted seed bait, well, it's its speed. While traditional compost piles take weeks or months to produce usable worm-friendly humus, a batch of sprouted legumes or grains can start drawing worms within three to five days. Because the process relies on fresh, soft, organic matter rather than woody material, decomposition happens quickly, especially in warm, moist conditions. This makes it an excellent strategy for mid-season soil boosts when you don't have time to build and wait on a full compost batch. There's also a seasonal angle to consider. 
In cooler months, worms slow down and their feeding range shrinks. Using sprouted seeds in early spring or late autumn can wake up sluggish populations and encourage them to stay active longer into the season. In summer, the high water content of the sprouts can provide a moisture hotspot in otherwise dry soil, giving worms a refuge during hot spells. No matter the season, the principle is the same. Create a microzone that's so nutrient-rich and hospitable that worms can't resist moving in. If you're worried about the seeds sprouting further and becoming unwanted plants, you can adjust the method to prevent it. A light crushing of the sprouted seeds before burying them will release their juices and prevent them from establishing roots while still providing all the scent and nutrition worms seek. In fact, bruised or lightly mashed sprouts often release their attractant compounds even faster, making the bait more potent in the short term. For gardeners already working with raised beds or container gardens, the soaked seed method works just as well. In smaller growing spaces, you can apply the sprouts directly under mulch or in small pockets near plant roots. This has the dual benefit of attracting worms to the root zone and delivering fresh nutrients right where plants can access them. Over time, repeating the process every few weeks can build a thriving worm community that maintains itself through natural reproduction and feeding cycles. Some gardeners have even adapted this trick for worm bins and vermicomposting setups. By placing small amounts of sprouted legumes in a corner of the bin, you can stimulate feeding frenzies and accelerate compost breakdown. Just remember that in enclosed systems, the scent is strong. Use sparingly to avoid attracting fruit flies or overloading the bin. At its core, the soaked seed trick is about working with the natural instincts of worms, rather than forcing them into your garden. You're offering them a concentrated, easy-to-digest food source in an environment that's already moist and protected. They arrive for the feast, stay for the comfort, and in the process, do the heavy lifting of soil improvement for you. Whether you're rehabilitating a tired vegetable patch, jump-starting a new garden bed, or simply looking to boost worm activity mid-season, this method is one of the simplest and most effective tools you can add to your soil care arsenal. The next time you spot a jar of dried beans in your cupboard or a bag of old grain in the shed, think beyond the kitchen. With just a soak, a sprout, and a shallow burial, you can turn that humble seed into a beacon for the best soil builders nature has to offer. Your plants will benefit from the improved structure, your soil will hum with life, and your garden will gain a self-sustaining workforce that asks for nothing but the occasional helping of fresh sprouts. If you found this guide helpful and you're ready to unlock more simple, science-backed ways to make your soil thrive, don't forget to subscribe to Hydro Haven and share this with fellow gardeners. The more people who discover these low-effort, high-impact methods, the more living, fertile gardens we can create together.